G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in over on the west side of the map, we've got Kasper, who's going to be playing the Chinese in the color blue. This map, of course, is Nagari, and you don't always get fair spawns on Nagari, which is part of the reason why people like to dodge them. And you can see Kasper spawned in with one deep water fish, and over on the other side of the map, his enemy has spawned in with four. So, uh, you know, classic hybrid spawns coming in at you live. But who do we have over here? We've got in the red, playing as the Rus, it is the one and only Salami. You guys know him as the Wallalol King himself. It is, uh, it is, I'm excited. Let's just put it that way. It is, it's always a pleasure casting a Salami game. He is infamous for his technical ability to cause many Wallalols at, at uh, multiple different angles. One of the things, I, I actually watched a Salami game. So I've been playing a lot of Delhi on the ladder lately. And I was like, okay, who do I know that plays Delhi? And I was like, Salami, he plays Delhi. So I, I found a game that I was having a bit of trouble with in a matchup. It was Delhi versus Mongols, and I watched him play it, and he did the, the smartest thing. So he went and grabs a relic right here from outside, just to the south of his enemy's base, moves it up to the villager line, and doesn't he doesn't hit the wall alone. What he does is he actually takes the relics out of his own monastery that he's got back home with monks, triggers the wall alone, over here, so it, it triggers the sound in your headset, in your right ear. So immediately, if you're sitting here, you hear the wallalol, and you're like, you're looking over here, you're like, oh, where's the wallalol? And at the same time he does the wallalol, down underneath, grabs all the villagers, and you don't hear it. It's so smart. Maybe we'll see that today. That that was from like a month ago that I watched him do that. So uh, it was it was pretty impressive stuff. But obviously he's playing the Rus today. You can see he's already up to that 95 bounty, finding a, uh, a hunt up towards the north and also finding his enemy's hunt towards the south of the base. So one of the things that you can always take your enemy by surprise with is picking the Rus if you if they know what sieve you're playing. So normally people know Salami as a uh, as a dirty deli player. And uh, that's probably why, in this situation, Casper's only opened up with the single uh, scout. And now just realizing, oh, he's Rus, he pulls in the wolves. You can see he's got about 75 golds worth of wolves there. So not too bad from him. Scout going down to about 44 health. But he's going to be boat booming in the back here. Uh, but as, as I said earlier, doesn't have a lot of fish back here. And this is just the consequence of terrible map generation, which is something that seems to happen a lot on hybrid maps in particular. So if you're ever, you know, wondering if you're playing the ladder and people, you get the map like Danube River or Confluence or, you know, something like that, or even Nagari, uh, people will dodge those maps. And part of the reason why is just because of the high variability in those maps and unreliability of spawns. So you can see right here, like, very unfair. But by that same token, Salami not going to be taking too much advantage of that. Going to instead be going for a dock in the center and looking to maintain control over here. Obviously going up against the Chinese. China a bit bit safer, sticking to the back. I'm curious to see exactly how Casper's going to bring this one out. Now, keep in mind, this is currently on, I say the old patch it's it's on the current patch it's not in the pup uh this is we are on the live version of the game right now so uh it is definitely a um uh, one one thing to mention I, I don't know i don't know where i'm going with this i'm just gonna i'm just gonna move on to my next point okay so casper does scout out that there is a little bit of a herd here to be had tries to pick off the, the deer not gonna have a lot of success there you can see him actually trying to slaughter those sheep there and now at the same time I think that was Salami that gets that shot in. So Salami actually waiting for his enemy to fire off. And I think Casper just gave up. He's like, you know what, Salami? You're too damn good at that. I'm not going to bother. Uh, now, I would also love to just point out the fact that I don't actually have the overlay that is available to the Golden League or N4C. So if you've been watching Golden League, uh, which is the $125,000 event that is going on right now from EGC TV, or if you've watched N4C, which is the $100,000 event that just finished... Um, Apologies for not having that overlay. That overlay, we're having a little bit of difficulties with it coming across. So hopefully it comes across soon. But I can appreciate that your your uh, your time watching these casted games is probably not going to be as enjoyable as if it were to have that overlay. But now we already see an early barracks coming out from Casper. So a little bit of a curious decision here. And you can see how far away these spears are from each other. He is definitely intent on getting this bad boy down. And look at that sheep getting taken out. Villager doing a great job there of just picking it off. Now you can see that villager's got a nice little glow to it. That's because of the bounties that it's accumulated. Now going to be looking to focus down this dock, but one of the difficult things is you can see that Salami almost up to the next age. So even if this dock, which does get scouted by the way, uh, is sieged uh, in this position, it's going to be really difficult because he's still going to be able to transform those boats over. Uh, so now we see those lodger attack or lodger fishing ships. 
about to be switched over. Uh, any second now, you can expect that they are going to be going switching to an attack ship. Three, two, one. There it is. That one is going to be the attack ship, and there is absolutely no way in hell this dock is going down. Not today. Uh, you can see he's about halfway through now. Another 20 seconds. Actually, no, it's 20 seconds in total. Looks like a village. Oh, no, that is a, a spearman. It looks like a villager. It's very difficult to tell the difference between the two. And now, uh, look at this. A, a little bit of a counter wall coming in over on the other side as well. I don't know exactly what that's all about, but I think he's trying to prevent a secondary dock coming down, and now that dock going to be absolutely safe. We see that the attack ship is just doing work as it continues to push away these spears. Got to be able to pick off the spear here as well. So Salami going to be very happy with himself. A little bit of an interesting... Look at that. The the, sh the shading. I don't know what happens there. There's like the sun comes out when we're... Oh, there, what is going on with the light in this area? I do not know. Uh, but yeah, a little bit of a mistake, a misplay, I would say, by Casper there. Not sort of doing the math on how fast the Rus player would get up. It's very common that Rus players will look... Oh, he could, he could sack this scout if he wants to. Oh, he gets shot in the face! Point blank! In the face! <laughs> he gets shot in the face there. Uh, completely destroyed. Uh, unfortunate. Unfortunate. Uh, so you might be wondering, why did he wall this other side? And that's a really good question. So what Casper was thinking is Casper's like, okay, I know that he is... And it, it's, a, it's a little bit of a, a, a mistake from Casper. I know that I'm going to siege down this dock. So when I siege down this dock... What do we got going over here? I thought we might have forward villagers. It doesn't seem like it. Just Spears doing it. Uh, when my when I siege down this dock, my enemy is going to look to drop a dock on the other side. So I'm going to prevent that from happening. But he's playing the Rus. So even if you do that, he's just going to have six fishing boats and they're just going to be very happily collecting uh, the fish. And because you can see right there, the plus 40s that are going, the Rus fishing boats don't have to go back to the dock. So even if you did that, it's still a misplay. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of a... A little bit of a misplay coming out there. Now Casper going to be able to, to age up very shortly. Sitting at seven minutes in the first age. He's not too fussed about it. He's very happy to play it out in the first age. Obviously China able to get up to that next age very quickly. Uh, but we'll see how he does it. A lot of villagers on gold. To me indicates he's thinking about a fast castle potentially. And very interestingly not actually clicking the age up button yet. What is going on with Casper? Is he, is he playing like a little bit of a... Is he keeping his you know, his cards close to his chest. Is that what he's doing? Because he could just, like, he could start tapping away at the Imperial Academy. I guess he doesn't really need to, though. That's the thing. Like, realistically, what do you gain from going to age two? Quite literally nothing if you're planning on going for a fast castle. And that's exactly what I think he might be doing. We'll see how he plays it out, though. Over on the other side, you can see that Salami still yet... Look at the f look at the wood that Salami is gathering up right now. He's a man on a mission. He is intent on gathering up this wood. So much wood uh, on, on, this, uh, on this wood line. Look at that. 20 villagers. That's ludicrous. Um, so probably going to have to readjust that one. Maybe move them down to, to berries. Potentially even look at getting some of these deer in. Uh, but... Uh, he is currently sitting on 32 villagers. Over on the other side, 38 villagers for Casper. Uh, now, a lot of these are in fishing boats. He's got 10 fishing boats. But keep in mind, these fishing boats, I mean, they're, they're not too long for this world. Casper now aging up. Barbican getting dropped down. Uh, so does put it down. I think he must have forgotten that he was in, <laughs> in the first age. And he's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, now begins to drop stables. Uh, so pretty smart move here. I do like this composition coming out from Casper. I'm a big fan of the double melee comp, especially as China. It feels really strong. Um, so let's see exactly what he manages to do here. Probably just going to be opening up with plenty of horsemen. So it looks like he's going to be just doubling up on horsemen. And now... What's going on with the gold? Oh, I've got so many questions for Casper. He looks all over the place. And now it looks like Imperial Academy going to be coming down. So going to be going for a dynasty. Eight minutes, 46. A little bit delay on the dynasty. I definitely feel like coming into this game, Casper doesn't have too much of a plan. And, and sometimes it, it, it can look that way, but it might not be that way. But it definitely feels that way to me. Uh, but now you can see Salami going to be losing out a couple of archers here for free. Almost taking out the Spearman. Not going to have too much success. Barbican going to be firing down upon this bad boy as well. Going to be losing his life. Unfortunate. Rest in peace, little man. And uh, now the Song Dynasty has begun. So it means faster villagers now coming out for Casper as well. And uh, we can see those scouts moving back. A barracks coming down in a forward position. He's kind of telegraphing his enemy. Hey, I'm going to be making these. And look at the fishing boats that are now coming out. Or well, not fishing boats, but he's making an attack ship. I got no idea why he's making another attack ship. He already had one attack ship. Attack ship now coming back towards the dock. You can see he's forcing back these villagers. He wants to get them out. 
And now you can see that uh, at the same time, the scout going to be chasing away the enemy scouts. And that attack ship's got to be careful of not getting too close. You can see the villagers trying their best. Keep in mind, he can't actually garrison inside that. Oh, careful, careful. Those guys do a lot of damage, you can see. And he's going to manage to micro his way out of that. And uh, it looks like he's going to have to fall back. But Salami now going to be able to click up to the next stage. Abby of the Trinity probably going to be coming down shortly. There she is. Uh, so going to be right next to the town center. Only eight villagers on that. Normally, you'd see about double that. Uh, but uh, obviously, in this situation... Uh, that's probably the most reasonable amount. Now, Casper looking to continue adding in the military mass in this situation. So we'll see how he looks to develop, um, but still quite a far way off aging up at this point in time uh, for Casper. Obviously, food going to be the biggest issue for him. It does say he's got 47 villages. I have no idea where they are. Maybe this is where they are. He's looking to add a second TC. I... I <laughs> I really do mean it when I say I feel like Casper is all over the place at the moment, like just the way he's playing. And I, I love that he's able to play so all over the place and yet still stay in the game. I mean, if we check the score right now, I'm curious to see Casper's actually ahead. I mean, once Salami ages up, he'll probably rock it up by about 300, 400 points. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it, it surprises me that Casper can just play so... Uh, Whatever the opposite of methodical is, that's how Casper's playing it. He's erratic. He's all over the spot, all over the shop, I guess is probably the better way to say it. But now it looks like the dock going to be going down. Casper making a bit of a move back here, some mogul moves, and does actually have a, uh, a junk coming out. Obviously, uh, the attack ship's going to be able to get the upgrades there, but this dock also going to be going down. Salami now going to be looking to potentially move into Warrior Monks. You can see a lot of food is being saved up from him, and indeed, Warrior Monks going to be coming out. He's got one in queue. Did a little bit of a, a, sick, a, a ticket sale right there. And so many villagers just eating into this wood line at this point in time. But Salami at this point, I mean, he's still looking good. Keep in mind, these four fishing boats, they are still working very efficiently. He doesn't need a dock to drop this off. So you can see right there, 50, uh, 50 fish getting dropped off. He's actually got the upgrade, so that's kind of impressive. Uh, he's already got the, the tier one upgrade. But now you can see he's already getting through. He's already chopping through his own wood, his like first wood line. We're at 11 minutes into this game, and he's already chopping through. And now we see the attack ships beginning to move out. Going to be fighting up against the junks. We'll take a look at the difference between stats. Very, very close, actually. A little bit more armor on the attack ship, but a little bit more health on the junk. Obviously, a lot more cost on the junk as well. And now falling back towards this dock. He's going to be trying to hold on for dear life. Not having a lot of luck. That bad boy going to be going down. And it looks like he's got the demo ship coming out now as well. Uh, trying to do some damage here and manages to take out a lot of health on these bad boys. Second demo comes in. And now we are very, very short for this world. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like they are going to be going down. But a very nice distraction coming in from Casper behind this. So the attack ships, it's they take a long time to go through this. So he's going to buy himself some time. He comes over here. Sieges down this dock. He might actually get this dock as well. It's a long way back, and you can see now he's attracted the uh, the the boats back there. He only sends two back, but it's still going to be just enough for him to get that out. So you can see he's making a fishing boat. So smart move there from Casper. Definitely uh, tugging when he got pulled. Uh, but now we we'll check village account. Fifty nine villagers for Casper. Uh, versus the 51 for Salami. Salami, obviously, Abby of the Trinity is already in. And look at the little proxy that we've got down here. Bit of a graphical glitch coming through right there. Not sure exactly what that is. It's something to do with water, though. It always seems to be happening with water. Men at Arms going to be coming out now. So telegraphing that over to Casper. Casper's going to see that Men at Arms and say, okay, so your plan is Men at Arms. Because normally if you see one Men at Arms, you can almost guarantee there's going to be a second, a third, and then a 500th. Uh, by that time. But now you can see Casper going to be working towards that castle age. 1,300, 1,400 wood in the bank. Going to be dropping down a market and it definitely makes sense. And now looking to drop down his landmark potentially. What's going on here? Maybe a bit of a forward outpost crawl potentially is an option. Maybe if, if, if you've got like a castle on the hill, it wouldn't be too bad. Actually, I wonder if a castle from up here or a keep from up here would be able to fire down onto these ships. I feel like it would be able to. Dude, that's actually a pretty good view. Look at that. Look at, look at that difference in height right there. Oh, man. Looks like both of these docks are going to be going down, though. We'll check in on Salami and see how he's doing. So we see that he's captured up one of the relics now. Going to be looking to capture up the rest of them. Three up to the north. Still one down towards the south that is yet to be touched. I think the first relic he picked up was somewhere down here. Yeah, there it was. You can see the scout even sitting on it for Casper. A uh, little bit too late. Loses both of the docks, and now those villagers coming through on the back. Casper actually looking for a bit of an aggressive wall now. So smart moves coming in from Casper. And we see that the first segment of the stone wall gets placed down. Look how fast it gets built as well. Just ludicrously quickly. 
And, uh, and now Casper moving up towards this position. And you can see Salami kind of forced out. Salami was moving up here with anticipation. And now the, the stone wall is completely built with the exception of a couple of these little guys in the middle. Uh, but that's all he needs to do. Just come along and tap it. And that you cannot traverse through here. Uh, so now we hear those relics being picked up. So another one down towards the south. Going to be grabbing the sacred site as well. But obviously, Casper has locked out that sacred site in his position as well. So he's going to be feeling pretty good about himself. Now, one thing that he's probably not feeling too good about is 2,700 wood in the bank. What do you even do with 2,700 wood in the bank? I feel like you probably drop down like four or five barracks and a whole bunch of farms. And you take everyone off food or off, off wood. And then like you just forget about wood for like a minute or two. That's probably the best bet that you could have. Uh, but uh, looks like the men at arms going to be pushing through. No upgrades for these bad boys just yet. Just doing a little bit of a distraction almost at this point. And we can take a look over at Salami. No real thoughts of Imperial at this stage. Going to continue building barracks towards his enemy's base. And you can see them starting to build up. I wouldn't be surprised if he's researching siege engineering right now. Not yet. I suspect it's going to be coming in any second. Because I've never seen a base that needs siege engineering as much as this one. Uh, this one's just asking to be rammed. Uh, but the other option is obviously trebuchets. Siege Workshop coming out. So he could be looking for trebuchets. Could also be looking for mangonels. Definitely in this position. A, an eff effective counter against these men at arms is going to be something like your, um, your crossbows. And so mangonels will deal very effectively with that. Uh, but we can see Casper now somehow has managed uh, to spend his wood. Uh, and uh, it seems like he's done the right thing, investing in a lot of farms up towards the north. Now, the thing with China is that you want to make sure you've got your wheelbarrow in when you start moving over to farms. And ideally, you want to be moving over to farms about this time. 16 minutes isn't a bad time. Uh, but yeah, from a theory perspective, it definitely makes sense to get your wheelbarrow once you've gotten your farms down as China. Because before then, it's going to be cutting off a fair bit of your tax. But now we see villagers moving out. Could be going for a forward castle here. No, just going to be dropping down a mill. I guess that makes a lot of sense. He's, he's walled this position off completely. Uh, so any potential threat of coming through here. Going to be blocked off. Uh, now, I'm sure he's tested this and made sure that that's the only way through, but there is another relic he's going to be able to grab there. Also, two more relics behind that and the sacred site. So I wouldn't be surprised if we potentially see a monastery get dropped down up here. It would be very nice. But keep in mind, Doc's still here in position. He could always look to get it across. And now we've got ourselves a bit of a forward keep. I say forward keep. It's not particularly forward. More of a defensive keep. 15 villages inside that bad boy. Knights or Lance is going to be coming out, looking to siege down that counterweight trebuchet. And now the men at arms are going to be looking to move in underneath. You can see the boiling oil coming through yet to receive that nerf that it's going to be getting in the PUP, the public update preview. And now Men at Arms moving into the base of Casfar. Casfar probably a little bit worried at this point because 18 Men at Arms, that's nothing to sniff at. But at the same time, he doesn't really find too much at this point. You can see the Barbicans in here, the town center's doing work. Now he finds the villagers. He's moving up towards these farms. Once he gets up here, he's going to be feeling a little bit better about himself. Does have the plus one ranged attack or ranged defense. And now these knights are going to be looking to clean this up at the same time. It looks like we've got a bit of a spear raid back in the base now of uh, of Salami. And now we can see that the Lancers are really trying to uh, do some damage here. A couple of villagers going down in. Almost emergency villagers getting put down in this position for the villagers to actually jump inside. And it looks like Casper going to clean this up completely. So Casper doing a great job there. 12 knights. Uh, the keep almost came on perfect time. And uh, the uh, trebuchet was taken out. Second trebuchet going to be coming out. He's got the wooden fortress on top of the hill. Uh, this bad boy already got the sprinkled in. Now going to be getting the arrow slits in. But keep in mind, it's... Oh, does, oh, it adds the extra range even with the arrow slits coming in last. Oh, I didn't realize that. I thought it had to be arrow slits first. So there you go. Now Casper going to be... Uh... <laughs> okay, you came to the wrong neighborhood, my friend. Uh, back you go. Back you go. Trebuchet now coming out. So uh, I suspect Casper's probably going to spot that and look to move down there. Spears only hardened at this point in time, so yet to grab that upgrade uh, for the veterancy. Do we hear that coming in now? No, it's only a sprinkled emplacement. It's through for Casper. Going to be able to pick up a couple of villages here as well. Trebuchet moving back a bit. Obviously a little bit... Uh, a little bit... What's the word? A little bit over, overly positive with the Siege Workshop. Hopeful, potentially. Now, uh, you know, building that Siege Workshop on the back line. I wouldn't be surprised if we actually saw some out or some uh, walls coming across here for Salami. He's the kind of guy to wall stuff in, so we'll see how he does it. He's sitting on 68 villagers at the moment, compared over to Casper, who's on 109. So a 40 villager difference between these two guys. That's absolutely huge at this point, and that, that's largely because of the 2TC Song Dynasty. 
all that extra food that he was gathering from the fish out here, he was able to turn that into extra villages. So a great use of that food. And now Casper also has the Imperial Palace. You can see that he's already used the Spies ability, the Imperial Spies ability. We'll see if he does that. Now insufficient wood. No, not like this. Insufficient wood. It's one of my greatest fears to have insufficient wood or at least be told that I've got insufficient wood. Um, and uh, th that is something that the game will do. It will definitely tell you if there is insufficient wood in the area. And uh, unfortunately, it looks like that Springwood Outpost is going to be able to do really good, effective work uh, in this situation. Uh, but Boiling Oil has now ca come in. You can see the upgrade down here. Uh, so on the other side, Salami still sitting happily with his Sacred Site. Now another forward uh, keep going to be getting dropped down here. You can see him really moving forward. Actually, is he just sieging down this position? I think he wanted to put a keep here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he wanted to put a keep there. And he's like, uh, okay, you're in, my, you're in my spot, man. I'm going to need you to move. But now it looks like he's uh, he's going to be able to get this keep up without too many issues. You can see the trebuchets coming out, but this keep going to be preventing that from uh, really doing too much damage. And now villagers are going to be turning their attention potentially to the siege workshop. No, it's going to be the, the trebuchets. Look at these guys. These guys mean absolute business. Do not mess with the villagers. These guys still yet to have their textile upgrade. Beautiful block coming in right there from Salami. He manages to keep a, a pretty good dis distance on these. And it looks like he's sacrificing all of these villagers at this point. 19 villagers. You can see he's sieging down the trebuchet. Trebuchet was getting healed up and now going to be focused down the second one. Look at all the villagers in here just running amok. He's managed to survive with about 12 of them after killing those two trebuchets. And now he's going to look to evacuate the dance floor. And you can see the counterweight trebuchet on the front line just getting completely destroyed by those keeps. So a huge amount of damage that comes out. Keep in mind they, they do uh, extra damage uh, just simply because they have hand cannons rather than, uh, rather than those uh, typical arrows uh, that most keeps have got. And now another siege workshop coming out for Kasfa, and he is moving forward. Look at these beautiful farms. I gotta say, if, if there, there is one thing that is missing from this beautiful Chinese base, and that is more mills. You have a single mill right now supporting one, two, three, four, five, six farms away. Look how far this guy has got to run. Let's count how far this guy has got to run. If there's ever been a definition of like a long distance runner, it is this guy right here. We're going to count it. We are actually going to count it. Another keep going to be going down. Salami actually in trouble here as Casper continues to push forward. Let's see. He's up to 10. He should be on 15. He's going to be going back. Get ready to count it. 38. Here he goes. For the world record, long distance running with a single mill. Can he do it? He, get, he was in at 38. He answered in at 45. He's on the way back now. Looking to make his ends meet. He's up towards. Can he do it? 52. We'll call it 52. So a total of 14 seconds for him to run to the mill and run back. Ladies and gentlemen, please place your mills more appropriately. That is uh, <laughs> that is a major concern. But uh, yeah, I mean, granaries would be a great option in this situation. Uh, that is definitely a an accurate s suggestion. Uh, my fear is that, um, I mean, just, just even a, a single mill would be absolutely fine. And now you can really see the expansion coming through from Casper. Just a casual 65 villagers on food as China. Not, not too bad. Imperial Age reached over on the other side of the map. A forward armory. A very forward armory. I don't know if I like this. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, this is a little bit concerning for me, Salami. Because you have got your enemy who is pushing up on you. Okay, sure, they've got all this to deal with. And they eventually will. But they know that you just hit Imp. And now... You're, you've got a, a high armory that's in a great spot, except for the fact that you've got nothing to defend it. Uh, so now we can see that he is actually getting the bandit arms upgrade. So looking to get that extra defense. Now some Streltsy going to be coming out. Not a bad move by Salami to actually go into Streltsy. He's got eight. Ooh, okay. He's got eight archery ranges right now. Streltsy obviously a little bit cheaper than your normal hand cannon is. I'd love to see just a wall up here would have just helped him so much against these melee units. And now we see another archery range coming down. That's going to be number eight the same time being attacked in multiple areas a lot of action in this game and does actually put up a wall himself on this north side prevent any potential raids from coming through and we can see the villagers going to be having to evacuate the area obviously he's already gathered all the wood out on this initial one he's gone for a what happened down here he lost both of these blacksmiths jeez louise there must have been a raid and a half down there from Kaspa, but Kaspa in absolute control at this point. We check in with the score and see where these guys are at. Kaspa's still actually behind a little bit by about 200, even though it feels like Kaspa is so far ahead. 100 population versus 163. So Kaspa looking very good at the moment. Another forward keep now coming through. This is looking all but over at this point. I don't actually know how Salami is going to hold this one. Are we hear relics being picked up. Is that it? Yeah, it's finally happening now. So relics up towards the north. You see that monastery. I don't know where that guy is going. Okay, there we go. He's fixed himself up now. 
Uh, but forward keep going to be coming down right on top of the high armory. So going to stop any potential siege from coming out. They're also going to be able to take out any Streltsy. But now you can see that Streltsy mass starting to build. He's got double wooden fortress back here. Technically triple wooden fortress back here. There's a lot of wooden fortresses. He's continuing to kite. Now keep in mind with the Streltsy, the longer that you keep them standing still, the more damage they're actually going to start doing. Their damage continues to build uh, as the longer that they stand still. But he looks like he's going to be able to hold in this position. So obviously fighting up against armored units. That's where the Streltsy are going to excel. And so he's doing a great job against that. But now you can see horsemen starting to get mixed in. Uh, and this is the correct play from Kasper. So Kasper 100% just wants to be mixing in horsemen. Honestly, at this point, I would be tempted to just go like drop down like how many stables you got you got two stables drop like six stables you see this many archery ranges you know your enemy is making some streltsy baby uh the other alternative is to go for mangonels but as you guys know high armory what does that mean banded arms it means that your enemy is going to be making some insane sprinkles and you're not going to be able to keep up with them they're always going to have siege superiority so it's up to you to try and find creative ways to play against that because siege superiority absolutely is imperative uh, but uh, now we see Kasper looking to try and make a little bit of a play towards the middle here. Manages to lose a fair few villagers, but does actually get down the dock. So he'll be happy with that. A boar up towards the north coming under attack. A third town center for Kasper being placed down here as well. Uh, just because you thought 133 villagers was enough. You're wrong, my friend. It is all about those villagers. Kasper's doing a great job at finding the correct timing. And now we can see, look at the horsemen that are coming out already. And so Kasper really doing a great job of identifying. Uh, it, it was only seconds ago that we saw the first horsemen come out. And then like miraculously, the horsemen have magically just come out of nowhere. So I don't know where he was hiding them all. Good job to him for finding them. But we'll check in on Salami now, see where he's up to. He's got 13 Streltsy, 14 Men at Arms. Men at Arms is going to be effective against those horsemen once they've got the elite upgrade. But speaking of elite upgrades, we've got Salami who's now also in the Imperial Age. I'll switch it over to Income per minute. I know you guys love to see that once it starts getting to Imperial Age. And now we've got a couple more long... No, no way. Don't tell... How far away are these guys farming? This is ludicrous. What is going on here? What are you guys doing? Okay, these guys aren't farming. I got a little bit worried there. I was a little bit concerned. Salami manages to hold on, though. I mean, he stopped the push. Bombard now going to be coming out as well. Now, this isn't your most efficient Bombard. It's not sitting on the high armory, which, uh, by the way, had fine-tuned tuned guns in there. Slowly working this down. Oh, my Lord. Look at the amount of units that are out here on this middle ocean. Salami with 16 fishing ships right now. A keep also coming down on his dock. This is a huge food resource because, like, there are or a huge, huge food source, rather. There is a huge amount of fish in here to be had. And so keep in mind, like, Salami, if he loses that, 87 uh, villagers in total, 15 of that is right here. So that, that is a, a significant amount of resources. And now horsemen are going to be coming around the back. You can see the attack ship going to be firing off towards that horseman. Doesn't look like he's got a lot of upgrades. Only the melee upgrade is going to be helping him out at this point in time. Lance is still only showing that uh, melee upgrades as well. Now coming through up towards this position, there's a bit of a, a wood uh, a, a wood encampment up here, I guess you could call it. Just a few villagers hanging out, not mine or just minding their own business. Bombard's continuing to shred through this castle. Once it does go down, I suspect we'll see him move up, try and look to reclaim this, this high armory, and then begin to reclaim, potentially put some more siege workshops down. But uh, you can see that the uh, the horsemen just doing absolute work in this position. We'll check in now and see what Casper's upgrades are, what he's looking to get. He's going for reusable barrels for reducing the cost of the nest of bee. Very interesting. So not looking to go for elite horsemen, not looking to go for like elite palace guards or, or getting the battle hardened upgrade just going straight for that single single upgrade reusable barrels interesting decision we'll see how it plays out now pushing in uh there was a bit of a uh, a mining encampment that came down you can see he's mined out all the stone and now dropping down defensive outposts gotta be careful here he's got 164 villages casper what are you doing with 164 villages <laughs> classic casper uh, classic Casper. He is uh, just sitting on 164 villagers. He's in the Song Dynasty. He's got his town centers. He's having a good time. He's just making like he's making a little bit of villagers over here. Not too many. Just just hanging out. Uh, but this is the consequence of making too many villagers. I mean, I, I think he's deleting villagers now. It sounds like he's deleting villagers. He's deleting villagers, but he's making <laughs> villagers. Like you are wild, Casper. You are absolutely wild. You know that. Uh, you are one crazy guy. Uh, but now we can see he's actually. Oh oh oh. Are those no those are veteran horsemen okay he's putting them around the spirit way though which makes me think he wants to go into um into fire lancer so we'll see if he does that but you can see that he's definitely getting pushed back on this one front 
Um, and he's kind of, I wouldn't say he's thrown this game, but at the same time, it, it's been very difficult for him to find an opening. He's tried to invest a, oh my god, a Baoshuan now coming out in the middle. So Salami looking to finally lose water, and you can see that Baoshuan gonna be just one-shotting these fishing boats. Or, are they attack boats? What are those? Boom, boom, baby, get out of here. He's gotta be careful though, because, uh, he could turn those into, um, if he wanted to, he could turn those into the fire ships. Uh, and really start to do some damage. And finally, we see that Siege Workshop going to be going down. Still one back here. It would be annoying to have those alarms going off. But Casper doing a great job of stabilizing in this position. Now sits at 200 population, just with a casual 159 villagers at this point. So you would expect that he would uh, he'd probably be happy with that amount of villagers. Uh, we'll check on his town centers and see if he is. No, of course he's not. Of course he's not. Wait, how many town centers has he got? He's got two, three. I think he's just got the three. It's three with the Song Dynasty. So technically 4.5 town centers is what he's running with at the moment. And now Kaspar looking to actually add in Chokunu. Uh, so interestingly going only for melee armor, not going for range. But now we see him beginning to push in towards these bombards. We'll take a look from the perspective of Salami. It's a little bit difficult to see in these fights uh, just because they're happening in the stealth forest. Falling back towards that outpost or the, uh, the keep does manage to, to go down that single bombard. And now he's looking to try and hold on. How do you counter this composition uh, coming out from the... Um, or from Salami. I think the best way is probably Nest of Bees. But then you run into the difficult position. Speaking of difficult positions, Snooper AoE. Thank you very much for the big raid, my friend. Welcome, 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 fellas. Uh, we're just watching a bit of a Salami game. You guys know I like to visit the De Deli Isle occasionally. Or even when he plays the Deli, uh, what, visiting the Cheese Isle. But... Uh, it is, it's going to be a great time whenever you're watching a Salami game because he's somehow managing to weasel his way back into this one. It definitely looked like he wasn't going to be winning this one. He'd lost out his Siege Workshop, or rather his High Armory. He's lost all of the Siege Workshops on the front line. But now he's slowly rebuilding it. Slowly working his way towards the front. And now he's got this composition. You can see he's really down on population. Max population for Kasper uh, versus 136 now for Salami. And he's having a bit of a difficult time adding in units. And I really don't know why. Like, how hard... Is Salami AFK at this point? Just what you want to do, hit your shift key, and then just click this button a whole bunch of times. And that's it. That's all you got to do. But now you see the Baoshuan moving in. How close is he going to... Is he actually... No, don't tell me the Baoshuan can hit him from here. Oh, he wants it. He wants it so bad. Oh, oh, don't give it to him. Don't give it to him, Casper. Oh, my God. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. It's so damn close. Keep going to be going down, though. So well played over to uh, Salami. Manages to take it now. Casper, I guess the... the <laughs> it one-shot it from full health, dude. God, that does so much damage. Is that literally... How many cannons is that? Three? Six? Eight cannons? Is that eight cannons? One, two, three, four, five. I feel like it's six cannons. That's a lot of damage. Six times 84. You're talking about 400 and what? What is that? 480 plus damage? Fire Lancers. No, those are elite horsemen. They look like Fire Lancers. Uh, that is uh, that is an impressive amount of horsemen. Uh, the main concern that I've got is that we've only got... We've got 147 uh, economic units. So if I'm Casper right now, I'm just like, hmm... I, I think I'm just going to grab these 13 villagers and delete them. I mean, you probably don't want to delete those. Like, oh my god. Yeah, you just want to delete these guys right here. But they're on the... They're on the fields, though. That's the thing. And now we see that uh, we've got a little bit of a problem because casper has got this beautiful mass of Streltsy that's built up. But there's just not enough horsemen. This is the problem. If you're making too many villagers, you can't make it, you, you can't make enough military. And you might be thinking, all right, we'll just play with the mod that lets you get a thousand population. Sorry, man. That's on the pop. We ain't on the pop. We're on the OG version. And now villagers are going to be running away. But at the same time, like, to what end? Like, sure, go for it. Like, I ain't even fussed. I ain't even fussed. What kind of upgrades has Casper got? Let, let's take a look. He's got... Okay, he's got everything that's relevant. Honestly, you don't really need to go precision crossbreeding. You can, but it's really... Like, it takes like 20 minutes to pay off. I don't really know if it's worth it. Um, yeah, you know what? It's probably worth it for, for a guy like Casper who likes to build 165 villages on a good day. Uh, but now pushing forward with more outposts. Going to be looking to go into sprinkled emplacements, I'm assuming. No, cannon emplacements is going to be his choice. So a lot of uh, stone required for that one. Um, adds a defensive cannon emplacement to this structure and increases garrison arrow range by plus two. Does it do that for everything? Hmm. Huh. Maybe it doesn't say it for the other ones. Because I know it does it for, like, the arrow slits for the Mongols. I know that very well. Thank you very much. 
The interesting thing for me is though, even though Casper had so many villagers, he still never had like an overpowering economy. I don't know whether he was throwing away units or what he was doing, but it never really seemed to pop off. Like normally you would see players pop off. He's got like all of his upgrades though. That's the wild thing. Oh, he doesn't have double broad axe. Maybe is that what's holding him back? No, he's always had excess wood though. I don't actually know. Springlord's now coming out for Salami. And now we enter this late game phase where you can't stop the Rus. You literally cannot stop the Rus from here. The Rus is now online. Salami is online. He's made it to the late game. This is the dream composition. And I, I am genuinely of the belief that this is impossible to beat. You, you throw in a couple mangonels with this and chef's kiss. It's just, there's nothing you can do. Springlord's kill all the enemy Springlord's. So you can't make springlords to deal with your enemy siege so you have to make something else do you make siege no you can't make siege because you've got enemy springlords do you make horsemen well yeah you can make horsemen but how are you going to deal with it when there's how many streltsy have we got here we've got 53 streltsy we've got 14 men at arms like how are you going to deal with that you can't make any sort of uh military emplacement because the keeps just get destroyed by the bombards it's like I, i'm genuinely curious how you deal with it and i guess you could throw out like maybe grenadiers but even grenadiers just get countered by mangonels and keep in mind this is all made possible because of the high armory reducing the cost of these siege workshops or, or rather the the uh, reducing the amount spent by the siege workshops it reduces it by 20 percent you can see it there in addition to that also offers the unique upgrade so it's got things like instant tear down for your mangonels or your trebuchets but he doesn't even need them at this point now it looks like we've got some fire lances going to be coming in if there's a way to deal with this it's got to be fire lances nesta b's on the back line got to get focused down you can see the springles just take them out immediately he's not fussed at all and now a beautiful line coming through you can see the fire lances not really making too much of a connection here so probably we're going to have to head back to Craigslist and look for the misconnection. But um, unfortunately, it looks like Manganel does go down. All the bombards on the back line are going to be safe. And you can see the Streltsy completely mowing down these units. Elite Chokunu has come through. I really don't know how you defeat this. I genuinely don't know. Salami finds the God Tier combo and he just continues pushing through now. Also looks to get Elite Spears. Uh, but this, this was a really difficult choke point to fight through. And I mean, Casper fighting into that choke point... It kind of feels bad. I mean, ideally, you'd like to have a massive of cav up here, a massive cavalry down here, and then clamp these two. But obviously, not possible um, in that situation because he just pushed right in. And now everybody focuses down uh, the single imperial official. Uh, sorry, my eunuch friend. It was it was nice knowing you. And I, I feel like at this point, like the game is just over. It's just swung too far. And now we see barracks getting pushed down, put down for salami. These, uh, can I just say, like, these barracks look so sick as well. Where are they here? These are good looking barracks, man. They look so big. Look how big these barracks look. Is that like got a hole in the roof? It's got a hole in the roof. Give me this one. This one's new. I'll sleep in that one. You sleep in a barracks, right? I'm pretty sure you do. Now, in in this position... Whoa, Monk. Yo, Monk. <laughs> you, you, you gotta go back. I, I feel like there's one way that you can potentially deal with this as China. And it's by going for pyrotechnics. Uh, so pyrotechnics is the range increase. I don't actually see a university out. I'm going to just do a quick F6. No university out for Casper. Uh, so he's not going to be able to get pyrotechnics and just going mass clock tower bombards. But even then, I don't know if it's possible because you're always going to get outproduced by the high armory with the reduced sprinkled cost. So yeah, a bit of a difficult situation for him. Uh, but now we really see that Casper is uh, trying to hold on. He's sitting at max population at the same time. But look at the difference in military. 113 versus 66. Even though they're both max population, Salami's got twice the military of his enemy. And now going to continue to push in. You see him looking to actually wall up the center here. I, I, and I love the way that he does, it, does this. Does this? He crawls for... He, I said does this. I love the way that he does this. But uh, we can see the villagers actually coming down from the hill. He's actually... Is he pulling everything? It looks like he might be pulling everything. He might be heading in for a final hurrah. Villagers going to be coming in now. Managing to take down the uh, the majority of those Springlords. You can see two of them do go down. And now on the back line, it looks like the Vanessa B is going to be going down. Beautiful wall coming through for Salami. Just in, in the most amazing time. And now on top of the hill, you see the Chokunu going to be all bunched up together a mangonel shot or two would be beautiful and now you see the mangonels moving in over from the western side don't tell me it's gonna happen salami not like this mangonels unfolding beautiful shots coming through big damage coming out and all those chokunu just getting weakened significantly one more mangonel in the mix would have taken them out and it looks like they're all gonna go down 
that is some terrible shots coming out right there. Salami doing incredibly well. And I don't see how Casper's going to be able to replace this army. I mean, you just look how quickly those units died. You're going to need to have some serious production behind this. We'll take a look at his perspective. I mean, he's got serious production, 18 production facilities, but it's not going to be enough. Not when you've got this on your front door. And I don't think there's any real, real way that you can deal with this, honestly. It is, it's such a difficult composition. I think, like, the best play in this situation, mass bombards, mass nest of bees. So I'm talking, like, maybe eight to ten of each one. And then, I don't even know, like, what's your last unit? Like, maybe palace guards. I think you just go, like, full palace guards with that as well. And try and send the palace guards onto the springles while everything else focuses down the army. It, it's such a difficult comp to, to play up against. But now Bombard's going to be moving in. Looking to actually strike the Wonder here. Or the, uh, the Landmark. Uh, landmark going to be going down. Uh, so now going to be looking to focus that one. Then probably going to move on to the Astro Astronomical Clock Tower. A nice little relic position here as well. Uh, Astronomical Clock Tower is indeed going to be going down. And I suspect he could probably just take out all the landmarks. Where are the other landmarks? Does he have... No, nothing over here. Nothing over that way. I mean, he could just focus down the landmarks at this point. This is your furthest away landmark. So he's got... He's got one, two, three, four more landmarks to get through. And look at the walls coming up from Salami. This is exactly what you need to be doing in this situation. So smart, so annoying. Does he actually wall himself out? Defensive Wallalol comes in a little bit preemptive, I feel like. Probably could have been done a bit sooner, a bit uh, later. Mangan Elmas beginning to move. And look at this little hill that he's sitting up right now. He's going to try and funnel it in. Look at the the, um, the Fire Lancers trying their best. And all of the units getting completely destroyed right there. Mangan Elmas firing off. He manages to find his way through. Doing a little bit of a cheeky chop. And now those Mangan Elmas just doing a great job. And it has just been the, the absolute story of this game. It has been fighting into choke points against the rough, the Rus Death Ball. Just, just don't do it. It, it's not necessary. You don't have to do it. But Salami just makes it happen. He walls off these choke points. He takes the high ground. And every single time, he makes you pay. And that's exactly what he's done again. So re very well played. Sitting on 135 military population. 120 for his opponent. Does Casper actually hold this? There's no way Casper holds this. There's just too much here. Surely. Nesta B is firing off on the back line. I mean, it's doing work. Does get taken out. We'll see if the second one makes it alive. Going to continue firing off. Manganel's firing off into the uh, into the piece. You can see them just... The units are trickling in, but they're just getting so effectively taken out by the Bombards. And now that Nesta B is going to get struck as well. Got to be careful not to lose that Bombard. It's down to 27 health. I don't even know what's trickling it down. 26 health. It, it's like it's got a damage over time on it or something. But now Bombard's going to be turning around, taking out the Fire Lancers, the Lancers that are in here just trying to get through, but uh, not having a lot of luck. And now those Manganel's continuing to unfold, unpack on the back. Still adding in more military units. All of the production continuing to be added here for the second time in this game from Salami. So definitely an up, ups, upside down game. And in the end, every single fish in the pond looks like it's coming back. Nature is restoring. Look at this. It's restoring its way back to full. Man, meanwhile, over in the base of, uh, of Kasva, there's more trouble to be had. Salami looking incredibly strong gonna be trying to get through here ideally you probably want to delete a segment in this wall and then re-wall it once you get through or just put a gate up is that what he's doing it's so hard to see i think that's what he's doing i don't know i, I actually have no idea what he's doing right here he's just gonna move forward like, it, it's so cheeky look at that just moving forward with a couple of these bombards oh man this is this is tough to watch now manages to find a hole at the <laughs> at the back to go through that's where he's going to be looking to channel through the majority of his forces are now looking to focus down the rest of the military. I don't actually know how Kaspa can, can hold this. I mean, he's got three landmarks left. It's good game. There's no two ways about it. And uh, and now the, the Springle is going to be firing off. And indeed, good game does get called. Kaspa tapping out and just going to show you how strong that late game for the Rus is. Even being down such a massive gap when it comes to the economy, they're able to come back, able to pull it ahead with the Streltsy. So good game, well played. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.